Hey everyone, it's that math magician. And now that we have our five laws of exponents, let's go ahead and practice them and apply them to different problems without needing to expand or to simplify. So let's go ahead and look at the problem k to the negative fifth power. Using our fifth law of exponent, we hopefully recognize that there is a negative in the exponent. So all that we'll have to do is we'll just have to take that k, we'll put it underneath a one, and now the exponent will change from negative five to positive five, and that's what the problem is. That's all you gotta do. If it's a negative exponent, you put it underneath a one, and then the exponent change. All right, let's look at another example. Another example we can see is what if we had x to the negative two times x to the fifth power? Well, that looks exactly like our first law of exponent. And our first law of exponent says that we take the exponents when they're being multiplied and we just have to add our exponents. Well, negative two plus five, that adds to a three so my final answer here is just x cubed. All right, let's look at another example, another example from our laws of exponents. What if we had x to the negative two, the quantity to the fourth power? Again, we wanna use that law of exponents, the third one, which says that all I have to do is take these exponents and multiply them out. Well, negative two times four would give me a value of negative eight, and look what happens there. This looks exactly like our fifth law. I know that my exponent is to the negative eighth power, which means that I can put that guy underneath a one in a fraction, and the exponent becomes positive. All right, let's do one more, a couple more. Uh, examples here. Let's say that I had the number 529 to the zero power. Well, this is our fourth law of exponents, and we learned from that fourth law that anything to the zero power will just become a one. That's it for that problem. We're gonna like problems that have just a zero for the exponent, because whatever that exponent is attached to, it just becomes one. All right, let's go ahead and do one more example. The other example that I wanna do is what if we have y to the negative two over y to the negative three. This is that second law of exponent where we need to subtract our exponents out. Well, I see that we have y, I'll have negative two minus the negative three and if I'm subtracting the negative three, that ends up becoming a plus three, and so negative two minus negative three ends up becoming a positive one, so I actually don't really need to write the one. That simplifies to y. Alrighty, I hope these examples kind of helped you see how to apply these laws of exponents. It's very helpful, we no longer have to expand and simplify all we can do is apply those laws to help us solve the problems. All right, everyone, it's That Math Magician, and I hope you enjoyed these videos on exponential expressions.